Tonight, a new lawsuit is filed after a man who was shot by a Carleton County Sheriff says the deputy had consumed alcohol just hours before the incident. Plus, protests planned as Wisconsin's stay-home order is extended. People are expected to gather at the Capitol in protest. And back in business, how a major auto company is switching gears in hopes of helping create protective equipment for those on the front lines. From CBS3 Duluth, this is the CBS3 News at 10. Good evening, I'm Kristen Bakke. And I'm Anthony Matt. Thanks for joining us. A Moose Lake man is suing several agencies after being shot by a Carleton County Sheriff's deputy. The $35 million lawsuit claims the man's civil rights were violated when he was shot by the deputy who admitted to drinking hours earlier. According to the Minnesota BCA, 35-year-old Sean Michael Olthoff was shot twice by Sergeant Jason Warnagora last July at the Hillside Terrace Mobile Home Park. Olthoff was wanted after a previous incident where he allegedly pointed a gun at officers, but no weapon was recovered from his mobile home after he was shot. The shooting left Olthoff paralyzed from his chest down. CBS 3's Jesse Slater spoke with his lawyer tonight and takes a closer look at the lawsuit. Sergeant Jason Warnagora, a 15-year veteran of the Carleton County Sheriff's Office, told investigators he shot Sean Olthoff during an attempt from County SWAT to apprehend Olthoff. According to the lawsuit, Olthoff was unarmed. That's a, the most clear violation of a Fourth Amendment use of deadly force that I've ever seen. Robert Bennett, a Twin Cities attorney representing Olthoff, said his client had shown he had no weapons and was compliant with officers' demands before he was shot twice. Everybody's got a right to surrender without being shot. The lawsuit alleges that Warnagora admitted having two beers before responding to the incident. Before Warnagora went on a police raid that they knew was, they thought might be dangerous. He used uh, alcohol and admitted it to the BCA. Bennett said Olthoff remained in the hospital for nearly two months, racking up over $600,000 in medical bills. He said his client will likely end up having to pay millions in health care bills over the course of his life. This is a very serious situation when a person is rendered a quadriplegic. The suit seeks $25 million for physical injuries and pain and suffering. $10 million is being asked in punitive damages against Warnagora. In a statement from an attorney representing Carleton County, it reads in part, quote, Sergeant Warnagora, a 15-year veteran of the Carleton County Sheriff's Office, with an impeccable record as a professional caring officer, fired in response to a reasonable belief that Mr. Olthoff was armed and threatening the officers with great bodily harm or death. It goes on to say the deputy admitted he had two beers hours earlier while off duty and, quote, there is no reason to believe there was any alcohol in his system at the time of the shooting. We should note the Carleton County attorney performed an independent investigation and determined the shooting was justified. Dave joins us for a quick look at the weather. Hey, Dave, when's that warm up coming? It's got to be close, right? You know, it is really close. A lot of towns already have it, like I mentioned, at 6 or crack 60 degrees today. But for towns right by the lake, it still felt like winter with 30s and 40s. And if we just give it another day and a half or so, finally, the 50s at least could even come to Duluth and Superior and maybe even two harbors. Grand Marais is always a little bit of a stretch to get warm weather, but we can hope for folks there as well. All right, let's take a look at the current satellite and Doppler map because... Well, we do have another chance for a rain-snow mix like we've seen in on-and-off fashion for the past couple of days. This latest round has odds of payoff going about 30 to 40 percent and falling by tomorrow afternoon down towards 20 percent. And right now the Doppler map is showing some spotty showers out there and some stray flurries. So our forecast for our Friday indicates that we'll wake up to temperatures very close to the upper 20s for a lot of towns, maybe even 30. And then we watch the precip chance descend as we get through Friday afternoon. Could set us up for a dry, even sunny and mild weekend, which we'll talk about in a few more minutes. Thanks, Dave. Certain restrictions will be lifted when the Wisconsin's extended stay-at-home order goes into effect tomorrow. It includes golf courses being able to open, libraries can offer curbside pickup, non-essential businesses can also do curbside pickup along with deliveries or mailings. Lawn care and construction is permitted too. 
A reminder, you're still being asked to stay at home unless it's for an essential reason or to get some fresh air. The order extension is set to expire May 26th. Following Wisconsin's governor extending the state stay-at-home order, thousands of people are expected to gather at the Wisconsin State Capitol tomorrow afternoon to protest. As Gabriella Baccaro reports, police spent today preparing. None of us around the square can afford to lose any more business. Out of concern for safety, the old fashioned will delay opening until 3 p.m. on Friday. It was a very tough call for us, but uh, no amount of money is worth one of our employees or anyone getting sick. In a press conference Thursday, Governor Tony Evers was asked about the planned protest. He said he supports the First Amendment, but is advising participants to be cautious. I think it would be make a mistake to make the decision to uh, not comply or not not use good judgment by keeping uh, safe distance from someone else. Evers added that disregarding social distancing could be detrimental to someone else, but it's unclear if those who show up could face punishment. I, I don't think you'll see the Capitol Police out there or or other law officers out there with a um, measuring with a yardstick, seeing if people are too close or too far away. While the Department of Administration spokesperson Molly Vidal says they're not sure what citations or fines people could face at the protest. Violation of the original Safer at Home order is punishable by up to 30 days in prison and or a fine of up to $250. A statement from the Department of Administration reads, one of the declarations within the Capitol Police mission statement is to protect everyone's civil liberties, which includes the freedom of speech and freedom to assemble. It is also their mission to protect the health and welfare of the people of the state of Wisconsin. The Department of Administration says a permit was denied for an event of 1,000 people because of the Safer at Home order. Organizers say the protest will still happen. Hundreds of workers at General Motors and other auto companies have gone back to work to make face shields, surgical masks, and ventilators in a wartime-like effort to stem shortages of protective gear and equipment. Most automakers in the U.S. temporarily stopped making vehicles about a month ago after workers complained about the risks of infection at the factories. Detroit automakers are trying to restart production on their vehicles, perhaps as soon as early May, but both Ford and GM say medical gear production will continue. So right now we're manned up on two shifts and we have over 50 people a shift working. Um, these are volunteers that are coming from all over the company. Through our, through our giving program, we can volunteer online to come in and sign up for shifts to help us build these masks. Workers making medical gear will still get their full base pay. Some good news for some workers in Minnesota. Certain businesses will be allowed to reopen on Monday. Economic Development Commissioner Steve Grove laid out the plan today. Industrial and manufacturing businesses and some office-style workplaces will be allowed to reopen. Customer-facing businesses like restaurants and retail will not. Companies have to meet certain guidelines to reopen, like health screenings, social distancing policies, and disinfecting protocols. Grove says businesses have to come up with a formal plan before opening, and he encouraged owners to work with employees. Not only are you going to get good ideas from your employees, but investing them in the process of building a plan for your workplace means that they'll understand it better. And you'll all be on the same page about exactly what your business is going to do as you begin this process of, of reopening. Grove estimates this will allow up to 100,000 people to go back to work. The state is providing resources on its COVID-19 website for businesses to see if they qualify to reopen and learn what they need to do so safely. Minnesota students will not be returning to the classroom this year. Minnesota Governor Tim Walz made that announcement today. He said it was a difficult decision and not what students, teachers, or parents were hoping for. Walls says before the pandemic, the state was having an important conversation about inequities within the education system. COVID-19 and distance learning has only made those worse. It is uh, certainly falling heavily on communities of color, indigenous communities. It's falling heavily on rural communities because of the lack of broadband. So tomorrow we are going to do a much more extensive uh, deep dive into what our expectations are. Walls says they'll be looking more closely at the distance learning plan and making some modifications, trying to offset those inequities students face. Duluth School Superintendent Bill Grant says, says they have been preparing for this announcement. He says it allows them to go ahead and make decisions for the rest of the school year. One of Grant says main concerns going forward is making sure all students have internet access while distance learning. We really want to make sure that we're staying connected with all of our students. 
that uh, they are connecting with us as well. So helping us to connect students uh, with the schools, with their teachers, with other support staff is really important to us. Grants had said that around 1,500 kids do not have access to the Internet. They've been delivering learning packets to students who need them. He added that they're working on plans to possibly hold virtual-like graduation ceremonies. Still to come on Live Local CBS 3, one of Duluth's golf courses opened for business today. How they're keeping people safe and healthy. And Dave will have a quick peek at your weekend forecast right after the break. Get your news on the go. The CBS 3 mobile app. Welcome to Medical Insight, a weekly health care feature brought to you by the experts at Essentia Health. Here's your host, Louis St. George. Today on Medical Insight, Essentia Health radiation oncologist Dr. Jessica Sawyer discusses breath management techniques, specifically 4D CT or four dimensional CT scans, which can track tumors with remarkable precision. Some cancers are located in places in the body that move. So for instance, cancers that are in the lung. So when you breathe, your lungs move in and out, up and down. And so if there's a cancer within that lung, it's gonna move up and down and side to side and however many ways it moves. Using breath management techniques, what we're trying to do is to ensure that when patients come for treatment, we're actually treating the tumor no matter where it is in that cycle of breathing, so not missing. Standard CT is a great tool to use to see where the tumor is at that moment in time. Radiation treatment, for instance, takes, you know, 60 seconds, two minutes, and so during that time that the beam is on, a patient can't hold their breath that whole time. And so we actually have to have a four-dimensional in-time component also that helps us understand where that tumor is. 4D CT helps Dr. Sawyer and her team deliver radiation effectively and efficiently while minimizing risk to the patient. So we can make sure that when we deliver the radiation treatment, the plan itself, that we're ensuring that we're treating the cancer no matter where it is in, in the patient's breathing cycle, that we're not missing it, but also keeping our margins small to avoid as much normal lung as possible. So because we have that knowledge, we feel more comfortable using smaller margins, meaning our target is smaller, and when your target is smaller, you don't have as much collateral damage to the surrounding tissues. For Medical Insight, I'm Louis St. George. This Medical Insight was brought to you by Essentia Health. To learn more about the services we offer, visit EssentiaHealth.org. I'm Tom Tiffany. We have a special election coming up on May 12th, and while I'd prefer to shake your hand and ask for your vote, that'll have to wait. A lot has changed, but not my message. I'm a farm boy from rural Wisconsin, proud father of three daughters, a small businessman, and a proven citizen legislator. In Congress, I'll stand with President Trump to get people back to work and America up on her feet. I'm Tom Tiffany, and I approve this message. Spring style temperatures are creeping ever closer to the Twin Ports. Today they conquered a good chunk of the inland territories with high temps in the 50s, even the lower 60s, while right by the lake from Grand Portage down to Duluth and then over towards Ironwood and Besmer, we had 30s and 40s. But by the weekend, I think even those towns could crack into the 50s, lower 50s, but we'll call that a victory nonetheless. We're still taking baby steps towards that goal. It may not be quite there tomorrow. In fact, it may be cold enough tonight through a portion of tomorrow for another round of rain and snow mixes. First, though, we'll take a look at the current conditions coming in from the airport in Duluth, and the current air temperature for that part of our world is uh, a little bit on the brisk side at 34 degrees. Relative humidity, 56%. Wind easterly, 10 miles per hour. Could be windy, though, through tomorrow, 5 to 15 in general, with gusts towards 20. But once we get into the weekend, there is a chance that the winds are going to settle down as the sky clears up and the temperatures perk up as well. So here's the Doppler map for our region and we'll talk about the chance we're getting for the rain and snow mix here in our area. It's yet another in a long line of low pressure systems that's with us here and it's bringing a 20 to 30 even 40 percent chance for rain snow mixes 
for some towns right now, and those odds are for you there that they will continue through tonight and come your way tomorrow before finally fading away for the weekend. So as we take a bigger look at the picture here, we're going to see that trough of lower pressure is once again pretty close to the Canadian border. That's the way they've been rolling here lately, keeping the mixed chance going through tomorrow. But once we get into Saturday and Sunday, things are going to change up just a little bit here because higher pressure is going to nestle in between the two low pressure systems, the one that brings the mix and another one that could bring showers by Monday. But for Saturday and Sunday, I think that high will chase away those rain showers, bring in a couple days worth of sunshine, and again, help perk our temperatures up just a bit into the 50s for a good chunk of the region. Forecast here tonight is calling for low temps to be, in general, upper 20s through the lower 30s in Minnesota, with a chance for the precip to come across your town just in case it hasn't done so already. Into Wisconsin and Michigan, the low temperatures there are probably going to run about 30 to 35 degrees. So overnight lows are increasing slowly, and and daytime highs are following suit. Again, already inland communities have started to receive spring-style weather. It's the lakeside communities that are holding out. And so for tomorrow, Wisconsin Michigan's range should be 50 to 55 with a 30% chance for a mix. And a northeast wind, 5 to 15 miles per hour. Minnesota's wind will be slightly different. I think it's going to be more southeasterly, easterly, 5 to 15, but with a 40% chance for a mix. And highs running from 48 by the lake to maybe 55 towards Moose Lake. Now, forecast here. What are we getting for the week ahead? Here comes the seven day. And the seven day is one to behold. It's peppered here and there with a little bit of precip. Yes. Uh, for example, tomorrow we get that chance for the mix, especially in the morning and early afternoon. Then sunshine for the weekend. Another round of rains could be with us Monday and Tuesday, but we hold on to the 50s. Then it gets sunnier for Wednesday and next Thursday. And I dare say even Duluth and Superior could bust the 60 degree mark, Anthony and Kristen. So as usual, spring is a waiting game, but we Northlanders spend our whole lives waiting for warmer weather. It's nothing new to us. We sure do. In the meantime, I like seeing a seven day forecast with seven days of temperatures 50 or above. That looks good to me. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> Duluth's Anger Golf Course opened its driving range today, but not without some serious precautions in the wake of COVID-19. Signs throughout the course ask golfers to maintain social distancing while they play. Bill Colgan, a regional manager for Billy Casper Golf, which manages Anger, says they have a new policy that encourages players to only touch their own equipment. They want golfers to know about some other changes as well. Eliminating touch points, um, closing off certain areas of the clubhouse, um, to just social socialization, so food and beverages areas are shut down. There's, you know, just essentially just think of never being within six feet of someone. Colgan says that courses have eliminated rakes, ball washers, benches, and seating areas. They plan to open up the entire golf course tomorrow. Well, Anger Golf Course will be open for golfers this season. Mayor Emily Larson announced this week that the loose other public golf course. Lester Park will not. CBS 3's Ryan Campos spoke with the Duluth golf community to get their reaction and hear what they are hoping for going forward. I'm trying to figure out where I'm supposed to go golf. Frustration and confusion is what many had to say Thursday afternoon as a handful of golfers met at Lester Park Golf Course to show support for the course. It was quite upsetting to, to have get through the whole winter and look forward to getting out on the golf course. Obviously, uh, COVID 19's putting a crimp in everything these days. Uh, and it's just, it's frustrating to have that taken away when we thought that we had that to look forward to. The course was built during the Depression as a way to stimulate the economy. In that time, it has created a sense of tradition for many golfers, including Pat Byrne, who was hoping to start golfing there with his daughter. It's tough not having a good answer for, and, um, you know, we'll, we'll find a place to go, but um, it just seems like it'd be a lot easier if, if it was a place that I know, you know, that, that, you know, you know all the people and, you know, you know the course. While friends of Duluth Public Golf say Lester has been operating at a profit, the city of Duluth says that's because all operating expenses for both golf courses are assigned to anger. And collectively, they both took a one hundred fifty thousand dollar hit in twenty nineteen. If we can't make anything work this year, we'd like a guarantee that Lester will be open next year and for the years following that. 
The city's Parks and Rec Department announced they will issue refunds to golfers as long as refund requests are submitted by Friday, May 8th. If you use your season pass at Anger before then, you forfeit the chance to get a refund. The policy and contact information can be found at DuluthGolf.com. Still to come on Live Local CBS 3, hopeful but unsure. That's the message from Minnesota State Fair officials as they decide whether to proceed with the great get-together. CBS 3 Live Cams are brought to you by Kohler Chevrolet Buick GMC Cadillac. You're not just getting a car, you're getting Kohler. The nursing program at Fond du Lac Tribal and Community College is really challenging, but it has to be. It's approved by the Board of Nursing. And graduates here have been successfully passing the state board exam. They give you real-world experience with healthcare institutions across the community. I'm really glad I chose Fond du Lac Tribal and Community College. It's time for the biggest sale of the year. It's time for the Toro Spring Sales Event. It's time to head to your local Toro dealer where you can save up to $750 on select Toro Z-Masters, up to $600 on select Toro Time Cutters, and up to $500 on select Toro Grandstands and Titan HDs, plus special financing offers on brand new Toro equipment. Toro, count on it. For more info on great deals and financing offers, visit your local Toro dealer. Friday on CBS 3 this morning, we hear from Northland Hospital leaders following the new testing program here in Minnesota. And we'll have a look at that weekend weather forecast as well. So wake up with us starting at 5 a.m. On behalf of the over 400,000 accredited businesses that support our services across North America, BBB salutes those individuals who cannot shelter in place. Many remain on the front lines, delivering essential services, often at great risk and sacrifice, to enrich or save lives in this time of desperate need. Thank you. Eventually, the all clear will sound, and we will begin returning to normal. Hopefully, we will never forget how much we missed our normal while it was away. Sports are my passion and the love of my life. And when you watch a sports cast, the biggest compliment that I get is that you seem so excited about what you're talking about. And that's not an act for me. Who doesn't want to see someone, you know, deliver their news in a fun way? So if you love it, I love it. You're gonna see you're, you're gonna see the authenticity that I think I bring to CBS CBS Three Sports. <laughs> Watch sports with Kelly Hinseth on CBS3. I chose a career that isn't easy, it's dangerous, and it's hard. Fond du Lac Tribal and Community College has set me up with everything I need to succeed. Through challenging classes, longer defensive tactics training, and instructors who work in the industry, Fond du Lac Tribal and Community College is setting me up for success. Duluth Lawn and Sports is open. 4715 Grand Avenue, Duluth. Always on the go, but want to keep up with the day's news? Don't worry. Now we are wherever you are. Traveling? No problem. Stream wherever, whenever with live local CBS 3. Catch Eye on Parenting every Thursday at 6 with me, Leanne Valdez on CBS 3. Your Minnesota power bill is still going up, but not as much as you once thought. Back in November, we reported Minnesota power was planning a 10% overall rate increase. Now, due to COVID-19, the company wants to slice that increase by about 6%. Company leaders say they hope this will help customers out financially during these tough times. Their proposal also means a refund on certain bills for all customers this summer. Minnesota Power also plans to hold off on any future rate increases until March of next year. Check out our website for more on what this means for you. The Minnesota Public Utilities Commission must approve the plan before it's final. The organizers of the Great Minnesota Get Together are hopeful but not sure it will happen this year due to coronavirus. In a Facebook post today, the State Fair said the outlook for the late summer event is unclear. They don't have a specific date by which they have to call it off. The organizers say they are talking about how they can safely hold the fair, but are not considering changing the dates or the duration as of right now. The fair is currently scheduled for August 27th through September 7th. They say they'll do what's best for Minnesotans. Coming up in sports, the NFL draft is on. Find out what the Vikings and the Packers have done so far. 
Watch Jeopardy at 4.30, followed by CBS 3 Live at 5 on Live Local CBS 3. No one goes all in on made-from-scratch freshness like Papa Murphy's. Because when you go all in, people notice. Go all in with the new triple pet for just $9. Papa Murphy's. Change the way you pizza. Call A1 Movers today to schedule a free office relocation estimate. We have all the necessary tools and experience to help streamline your business's change of address. Our friendly, uniformed crew will carefully relocate and protect both your new and existing facility. Whether across the street or around the globe, one call hauls it all. Take the burden off of your staff and put it on ours. Remember, moving is hard. Calling A1 Movers is easy. My 95.7 is the Northland's best variety all day. From Ed Sheeran and Maroon 5 to Lady Gaga and Brian Adams. Always family and office friendly. My 95.7, your life, your music. In your community, there are businesses ready to help you through this difficult time. From restaurant takeout, appliance repair, roofing, or AC services, BBB connects you with local, trustworthy companies ready to do business safely and ethically. Support your local economy. BBB, building trust in trying times. Vaping has been declared a national epidemic among youth. One in three high schoolers vape in northeastern Minnesota. My child started having seizures from vaping. There's still so many unknown chemicals. One vape cartridge has as much nicotine as at least two packs of cigarettes. My child was hospitalized with severe lung injuries. They said it was no big deal. My child said it was no risk. That it was under control. That's what my child said. But what could I have said? Get the facts and talk to your child today. Mariah Haberman here from Discover Wisconsin. Join me and the rest of the DW crew every week on this station for all things Wisconsin. Continue the adventure on social media and discoverwisconsin.com for behind-the-scenes content and great Wisconsin giveaways, including a chance to win a free vacation. This week's featured prize package could take you to Sparta. Just visit discoverwisconsin.com for details. CBS 3 is going live at 5, focusing on bringing you hyper local news and weather, getting the stories that impact your community the most right down to your neighborhood. Wisconsin Town's 130-year-old. We're live outside the Husky Refinery. The city of Duluth is getting a new hockey rink. A new convention center is coming to Virginia. Special Ed here in Finland welcomes the mushers from the... CBS 3, live at 5. into sports it, the craziness has been going on all night it is nfl draft night let's not waste any time this one was pretty different compared to years past the, 2020 draft. the cincinnati bengals select joe burrow quarterback lsu That's NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell making the first pick of the 2020 NFL Draft in isolation from his basement. Like he said, the Cincinnati Bengals grabbed Joe Burrow, a generational talent level quarterback out of the reigning national champions LSU. Things proceeded at an extremely slow pace for the remainder of the night. The Vikings didn't make their first pick till almost three hours after the draft began. That's right, at 9.56 p.m., Minnesota's pick at number 22 was finally in, and it was a familiar one to Joe Burrow, his teammate and target wide receiver Je Je Justin Jefferson, the 6'1", 202-pound receiver, made great plays deep for the Tigers this past season. He racked up 1,500 yards down the bayou with 18 touchdowns. Vikings had another first-round pick coming at 25, but they decided to trade their second pick in the first round to the San Francisco 49ers for the 31st, 117th, and 176th pick. The rest of the way for the Vikings, that was pick number 22. They've got one in the second round, two in the third, 
One more in the first round coming, two in the third and seven in the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh rounds. That is a grand total of 14 picks for the Minnesota Vikings. As for the Packers, their first pick just came in about a minute and a half ago. Ten picks for the green and gold tonight with the 30th pick. They select Jordan Love, a quarterback out of Utah State. Love is 6'2 and 224 pounds. The Packers, as you can see, have nine picks to go. The Minnesota State High School League has officially released a statement regarding their spring sports season. The decision comes just hours after Governor Tim Walz issued an executive order to keep Minnesota schools closed through the rest of the academic year amid the COVID-19 crisis. The cancellation applies to all forms of student participation in league activity, athletics, and fine arts. According to the league, the section and state tournaments for all of the league's spring activities are also canceled. League officials encourage all students, coaches, advisors, and officials to adhere to the current stay-at-home order. Well, and some exciting basketball news for UMD grad Alex Illikanen. He's officially going to make a shot at the professional league. Illikanen signed with Duran International, a global basketball agency. The Grand Rapids native played three years of Division I basketball at Wisconsin. The Badger reached the Sweet 16 two of those years. Then he transferred for his last year of eligibility with UMD, averaging just under 14 points per game and over six rebounds. Tiger Woods and Phil Mickelson will once again be squaring off on live TV. This time it's for a good cause. It's for charity and with some very special guests. Bleacher Report confirmed yesterday that Tiger and Phil are set to do battle in a live golf event to benefit COVID-19 relief efforts called the Match Champions for Charity on TNT later next month. Peyton Manning and Tom Brady, ever heard of them, will also be involved with the two NFL stars expected to be paired up with the golfers. Mickelson responded to the announcement on Twitter saying... It's on now. The event is expected to take place sometime near Memorial Day on a course in Florida, but no official time and location have been announced. Along with the NFL draft, that is exactly what sports fans needed to hear in these times. Some sports to watch and all for a good cause at the same time. Well, that's going to do it for me and sports tonight. We'll be right back after the break. CBS 3 Closed Captioning is brought to you by Essentia Health. Choose to make a healthy difference in people's lives and join our team. Visit EssentiaCareers.org. CBS 3 is going live at 5, focusing on bringing you hyper local news and weather. Getting the stories that impact your community the most right down to your neighborhood. 130 year old. We're live outside the Husky Refinery. The city of Duluth is getting a new hockey rink. A new convention center is coming to Virginia. Special in here in Finland welcomes the mushers from the. CBS 3, live at 5. Understanding the world begins with the right questions. Do you trust Kim Jong-un? Doesn't the blame reside with Jewel? Is it now our top terrorist threat? With the right people. So you have forgiven. I have now. Right here. Check this out. More news. I'm Tony DeCoppo with CBS News. More original reporting. It puts everything in perspective. We are on a mission with NASA. Every morning on CBS This Morning. We're going to begin with breaking news. Sports are my passion and the love of my life. And when you watch a sports cast, the biggest compliment that I get is that you seem so excited about what you're talking about. And that's not an act for me. Who doesn't want to see someone, you know, deliver their news in a fun way? So if you love it, I love it. You're gonna see you're, you're gonna see the authenticity that I think I bring to CBS CBS3 Sports. <laughs> Watch Sports with Kelly Hinseth on CBS3. I don't believe there's another meteorologist in this area who has the experience and years that Dave has. His experience, that's something that's really special to CBS3. He worked his way up from janitor up to a weather guy. He, he's just like this bastion of knowledge. Get to know Dave Anderson weekday nights on live local CBS3. 
The coronavirus story continues to change, both around the world and here at home. We know you have questions and concerns. At Live Local CBS3, our focus is to keep you informed and up to date on the evolving COVID-19 virus story. We'll continue to talk to healthcare professionals to get the information you need to know. Focused on bringing you facts, not fear. That's our promise. We're Live Local CBS3. Local for a reason. For the news that impacts you most, turn to Live Local CBS 3. Wake up with Austin and Jenna at 5 a.m. An online concert brought a community together tonight to support local businesses devastated by fire. Odyssey Resorts hosted the concert on its Facebook page featuring local singer-songwriter Timmy Howes. People were asked to donate to a GoFundMe page supporting three Grand Marie businesses. The Crooked Spoon Cafe, Picnic and Pine, and White Pine North were all destroyed by fire. The proceeds from the fundraiser will be evenly split between them. At last check, they were a little more than halfway to their $100,000 goal. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow.